linear control systems lecture number 13 i am your instructor yasir amir khan and i welcome you to lecture number 13 lecture number 13 is related to root locus root locus root locus is basically plot of roots of the uh, closed loop transfer functions denominator polynomial as some parameter is varied as you will see mostly the parameter that is varied is uh, some uh, gain of some proportional controller and we determine the uh, closed loop system poles their location the parameter that we vary is continuously varied and it is varied from minus infinity to infinity when we plot the complete root locus but since the parameter that we normally consider is the gain of the proportional controller and it is varied from 0 to infinity Uh, it has value between zero and infinity. It has positive values. Therefore, we plot the root locus for uh, the parameter when it is varied from zero to infinity. The plot of the roots of the closed loop uh, transfer functions denominator polynomial, that is the closed loop poles, as we vary some parameter, gives us the root locus. Because we vary the parameter continuously, we get continuous values of the uh, poles. They keep on shifting, changing their position as we vary the parameter. now uh, when we vary the value of this parameter from minus infinity to 0 then the kind of root locus that we get is called the complementary root locus we will not be discussing or uh, considering the complementary root locus in today's lecture our focus will be on the root locus where we vary the parameter from 0 to infinity normally we connect k before plant in the single loop feedback control system and the k which is called the proportional controller and it takes positive values from 0 to infinity therefore we are concerned about the root locus where we vary the parameter from 0 to uh, where we vary k from 0 to infinity to abhi tak jo maine root locus ki baat ki hai usme maine aapko ye bataya hai ki root locus ek graph hota hai ek plot hota hai जिसमें हम रूट्स को प्लॉट करते हैं अब ये रूट्स जो हैं ये होते हैं आपके क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन के डिनोमिनेटर पॉलिनोमियल के इन रूट्स की अगर देखें आपके पास डिग्री वन का पॉलिनोमियल है तो फिर एक रूट आता है डिग्री टू का है तो दो आएंगे डिग्री थ्री का है तो तीन आएंगे लेकिन वो तीन पॉइंट्स दो या एक तीन एक एक पर के पॉइंट होगा यानी जो आपने रूट निकाला है मिसाल के तौर पर डिग्री टू के पॉलिनोमियल का से दो पॉइंट्स मिलेंगे आपको रूट लोकस में ऐसा नहीं होता रूट लोकस में हमें लोकस मिलता है पाथ मिलता है लाइंस मिलती हैं हमें और वो कैसे मिलती हैं कि हम किसी पैरामीटर को वेरी कर रहे होते हैं और उसके नतीजे में हर पैरामीटर की स्पेसिफिक वैल्यू के ऊपर आपको जो है नए रूट्स मिलते हैं और जब आप के को वेरी करते जाते हैं तो रूट्स की नई नई वैल्यूज़ निकलती चली जाती हैं सिंस वेरिएशन जो हमने पैरामीटर की रखी है वो कंटिन्यूस होती है आम तौर पे ज़ीरो से इन्फिनिटी तक इसलिए आपके पास जो रूट्स हैं वो चलते हुए नज़र आते हैं चलते हुए नज़र आने का मतलब ये है कि रूट किसी एक पॉइंट पे नहीं मिलेंगे बल्कि एक अगर कोई इसका रूट है तो वो रूट के की नेक्स्ट वैल्यू पे कहीं और आपको मिलेगा फिर के की नेक्स्ट वैल्यू पर कहीं और मिलेगा और कंटीन्यूस वेरिएशन की वजह से आपको एक कंटीन्यूस लाइन मिलेगी रूट की ग्राफ के ऊपर इस प्लाट को हम रूट लोकस कहते हैं ये प्लाट ये रूट ये प्लाट हमें ये इन्फॉर्मेशन देता है कि जब आप किसी पैरामीटर को वेरी करते हैं तो उस पर जो है रूट्स जो है वो कैसे चलते हैं के की किस या पैरामीटर की किस वैल्यू के ऊपर वो अनस्टेबल रीजन में है किस वैल्यू पे स्टेबल रीजन में है किस पे मार्जिनली स्टेबल हो रहा है सिस्टम कहाँ पे जो है उसमें उसका इमेजनरी और रियल पार्ट दोनों हैं कहाँ पर सिर्फ उसका रियल पार्ट इमेजनरी पार्ट ज़ीरो है वो एक्स एक्सेस पे रियल एक्सेस पे लाए कर रहे हैं वगैरह वगैरह ये तमाम इन्फॉर्मेशन आपको मिलती है रूट लोकस से और हम रूट लोकस को वैसे तो के पैरामीटर को वेरी करके माइनस इन्फिनिटी से प्लस इन्फिनिटी तक वेरी कर सकते हैं मगर आम तौर पे के की वैल्यूज़ पॉजिटिव ली जाती हैं इसलिए ज़ीरो से इन्फिनिटी तक पे के रूट लोकस को बनाया जाता है और जो दूसरा रूट लोकस का पोर्शन है माइनस इन्फिनिटी से ज़ीरो वाला उसको हम कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री रूट लोकस कहते हैं ये कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री रूट लोकस हम आपने आज के लेक्चर में नहीं स्टडी करेंगे हम जो है रूट लोकस वो स्टडी करेंगे जहाँ पर हमारा पैरामीटर ज़ीरो से इन्फिनिटी तक वेरी करेगा In order to understand this whole situation of root locus, consider this example. 
In this example, you can see that in the block diagram, there's a plant with a transfer function 1 upon s plus 1. In the feedback path, there's a sensor with a transfer function of 2. And you can also see that there, there's a proportional controller connected before plant. And there's a summer. We have a negative feedback. R is the input of the system and C is the output of the system. We are concerned about varying this parameter k. We will vary this parameter k from 0 to infinity and we will find out the roots of the denominator polynomial of the closed loop transfer function and plot them on a complex plane. Now closed loop transfer function is c upon r and uh, first of all we will find the closed loop transfer function and we will get the uh, denominator polynomial of the closed loop transfer function and then we'll find the roots of the, from the, there by varying k uh, from 0 to infinity. And uh, then those roots are plotted on the complex plane and we'll see that how they behave, what happened to them, how they move. They move to the, the unstable region or they stay in the stable region and what happens to them as we vary k. So this is the whole uh, story of root locus. So root locus, we have an example here. जिस में हमें नजर आ रहा है कि प्लांट का ट्रांसफर फंक्शन 1 upon s plus 1 है फीडबैक पाथ में हमने गेन 2 का लगाया सेंसर का गेन 2 है और हमारे पास नेगेटिव फीडबैक है सिस्टम की इनपुट r है और c जो है उसकी आउटपुट है और इसमें एक कंट्रोलर k प्रोपोर्शनल कंट्रोलर हमने कनेक्ट किया हुआ है हम इस प्रोपोर्शनल कंट्रोलर k को जो है वो वेरी करेंगे 0 से इंफिनिटी तक और उस पर जो क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन होता है c upon r उसके पोल्स को जो है वो हम स्टडी करना चाहते हैं देखना चाहते हैं कि वो कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन पे कहां पे जाएंगे जब हम के को वेरी करते जाएंगे तो जो है उन पोल्स की लोकेशन पे क्या तब्दीली आएगी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस फाइंड द क्लोज्ड लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एज वी कैन सी ओवर हियर इन द स्लाइड वी हैव वी आर फाइंडिंग द क्लोज्ड लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन दैट इज सी अपॉन आर यूजिंग द फार्मूला जी अपॉन 1 प्लस जी एच we are finding the closed loop, loop transfer function as k upon s plus 1 whole divided by in the denominator of the fraction we have 1 plus k upon s plus 1 and into 2 g upon 1 plus gh on the basis of formula g upon 1 plus gh which we have uh, considered many times we have the closed loop transfer function as shown over here in this slide we get the closed loop transfer function as k upon s plus 1 plus 2k this is the closed loop transfer function and in the denominator you can see the uh, denominator of the closed loop transfer function as s plus 1 plus 2k. So I have told you that in the slide we can find the closed loop transfer function as we find it. We will find the formula g upon 1 plus gh which you have seen many times and solve it and solve it. वही फार्मूला यहां पे लगेगा रिपीटेडली बहुत सारी जगहों पे हम उसको अप्लाई करते हैं तो g जो है वो हमारे पास 1 upon s plus 1 था उसके साथ सीरीज में k था फीडबैक पाथ में हमारे पास 2 था h यानी कि 2 के बराबर है तो हमारे पास क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन निकल के आता है जैसा कि आपको यहां पे नजर आ रहा है k upon s plus 1 plus 2k ये जो नजर आ रहा है डिनोमिनेटर में s plus 1 plus 2k ये closed loop transfer function का denominator polynomial है और इसके जो roots हैं उसकी हम बात कर रहे हैं कि हम उसके behavior को आ, complex plane पे plot करते हैं जैसे हम जैसे हम k को vary करते हैं so what we are talking about over here is that we vary k from 0 to infinity and as we vary k from 0 to infinity we get the, the values of uh, the roots of the, this denominator polynomial and as we vary k they, those roots are they appear to be moving on the complex plane and they sketch locus path lines on the complex plane that is what this root locus is all about so over here in this slide you can see that the characteristic equation is s plus 2k plus 1 and the root of s is minus bracket 2k plus 1 k can be varied from minus infinity to infinity but our focus will be on varying k from 0 to infinity we will take positive values of k the uh, root locus for uh, minus infinity up to k is 0 uh, we vary a k from minus infinity to 0 is called the complementary root locus यहां पर आप देख सकते हैं कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इक्वेशन आपको नजर आ रही है स्क्रीन पे s plus 2k plus 1 इससे हम सॉल्व करेंगे तो s का रूट 
वैल्यू आती है हमारे पास रूट आता है एस इक्वल्स टू माइनस ब्रैकेट टू के प्लस वन इसमें के एक वेरिएबल की शक्ल में आपको नज़र आ रहा है इस के को हम वैसे तो माइनस इन्फिनिटी से इन्फिनिटी तक वेरी कर सकते हैं रूट लोकस बनाने के लिए मगर आम तौर पे के की वैल्यूज को पॉजिटिव रखा जाता है क्योंकि जो है ये के एक प्रोपोर्शनल कंट्रोलर है तो के को ज़ीरो से इन्फिनिटी रखते हुए हम जो रूट लोकस बनाते हैं वो हम पढ़ेंगे इस लेक्चर में लेकिन इसके साथ साथ आप अपने जहन में इस बात को भी रखें कि एक और रूट लोकस भी बनता है जिसमें हम के को वेरी करते हैं माइनस इन्फिनिटी से ज़ीरो तक इसको कहा जाता है कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री रूट लोकस कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री रूट लोकस जो है वो हम अभी इस लेक्चर में स्टडी नहीं कर रहे हमारा ध्यान रूट लोकस पे होगा जहाँ पर हम इस पैरामीटर के को वेरी कर रहे हैं ज़ीरो से इन्फिनिटी तक नाउ एज यू कैन सी ओवर हेयर Uh, what we have done is that okay, we know that the root of the denominator polynomial of the transfer function is s is equal to minus bracket 2k plus 1. We have made a table as you can see over here, which is shown on the right hand side, which has two columns. The left column has k and the right column has s. We are putting different values of k, starting from zero, one, five, etc. K is continuously varied. It is, uh, k does not have discrete values; it has continuous values from zero up to infinity. And for each value of k, we are finding a value, corresponding value of s, which is the pole of the closed loop transfer function. And then we are plotting that on the complex plane, which is shown over here. For zero, for example. S has a value of minus one. That is the starting point, and it is again the pole of the open loop function. If you look at the open loop function and determine its pole, the pole is at minus one. So whenever we start this process and put k equal to zero, we start from the pole of the open loop function. The pole of the closed loop transfer function is equal to the pole of open loop function when k is equal to zero only. And then we keep on increasing k. For example, at k is equal to one, the value turns out to be minus three, and then we increase to five. It becomes mi minus eleven, and uh, you we keep on increasing this k, and the value of s keeps on increasing with the uh, negative sign. And if we uh, do this thing. we can consider it as a pole moving in the uh, direction of minus infinity that's this pole appears to be moving in the along the negative x axis as we are what i am saying is that as we are increasing k from 0 to infinity our pole is slowly gradually relocating its position and moving towards minus infinity pole appears to be moving and we represent this movement by a line or locus or path that starting from minus 1 it keeps on moving along the x axis in the direction of minus negative infinity so this uh, uh, this thing is called the root locus this is what happens in the root locus we vary the parameter k from 0 1 2 3 so on up to infinity continuously as a result of which the uh, location of the closed loop pole changes starting from um, uh, the location of open loop pole it starts moving that pole starts moving uh, it is actually the pole of the closed loop transfer function but when we keep put k is equal to 0 at that time its position is at the at of the open loop function's pole when we keep on increasing k then the closed loop pole starts moving and keeps on moving and it uh, is going towards infinity in this case so actually we are uh, looking at the pole of the closed loop transfer function and the location of this closed loop transfer function pole initially is that of the open loop function pole and then when we uh, and that is happens for k is equal to 0 and when we uh, keep on increasing this k this closed loop pole keeps on moving in whatever direction it has in this case it is towards the minus infinity now i repeat this whole thing again dekhen ji ho ye raha hai ki hamare paas samne jo hai na ek aapko nazar aa raha hai ki pole hai closed loop transfer function ka do cheeze hoti hai ek to open loop function hai gh 
और एक क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन है सी अपॉन आर जो ब्लॉक डायग्राम में आपको दिया गया था सिस्टम उसका ट्रांसफर फंक्शन हम लोग कंसर्न है उसके पोल्स के बारे में क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन के पोल्स के बारे में क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन का पोल जो है वो आपके सामने लिखा हुआ है माइनस ब्रैकेट टू के प्लस वन और हमने एक टेबल बनाया है के है उसमें और एस है के को हम वेरी करेंगे जीरो से इन्फिनिटी तक हम कंटिन्यूसली वेरी करते हैं लेकिन टेबल में हम उसकी चंद एक वैल्यूज़ लिखेंगे और उसके करस्पॉन्डिंग एस की वैल्यूज़ को कैलकुलेट कर लेंगे जो कि पोल की वैल्यूज़ है क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन का पोल है अच्छा जब के को आप ज़ीरो रखते हैं तो उस वक्त क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन के जो पोल्स हैं वो ओपन लूप फंक्शन के पोल के बराबर आते हैं यहाँ पर एक ही पोल है तो एक ही क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन का पोल बराबर आ रहा है एक ही ओपन लूप फंक्शन के पोल पे ओपन लूप फंक्शन का पोल था माइनस वन अगर आप पीछे पिछली स्लाइड में जाके देखें वो माइनस वन था यहाँ पर के को जीरो रखने पे ओपन लूप फंक्शन क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन का जो पोल आ रहा है वो आ रहा है माइनस के बराबर यही होता है जब के ज़ीरो होता है तो क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन के पोल्स ओपन लूप फंक्शन पोल के के फंक्शन के पोल के बराबर होते हैं जब आप के को बढ़ाना शुरू करते हैं तो ये जो पोल्स हैं चलना शुरू कर देते हैं कौन से वाले पोल्स क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन के पोल हम लोग ये सारी मेहनत कर रहे हैं क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन के पोल्स के लिए को तो क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन के पोल चलना शुरू कर देते हैं जब हम के को बढ़ाना शुरू करते हैं तो ये पोल्स जो है हर के की वैल्यू पर एक नई जगह पर आते हैं अगर हम पिछली वैल्यू फिर उसके अगली वैल्यू फिर उससे अगली वैल्यू को देखें तो हमें ऐसे लगता है ये पोल्स चलते हुए जा रहे हैं तो ये चलते हुए कहाँ जा रहे होते हैं यहाँ पर इस केस में ये इन्फिनिटी की तरफ चलते हुए जा रहे हैं तो यहाँ पर जैसे कि आपको स्क्रीन पे नज़र आ रहा है स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम माइनस वन ये चलते 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 इन्फिनिटी की तरफ जा रहे हैं जैसे के को आपने ज़ीरो रखा तो पोल आया माइनस वन पे के को वन रखा तो माइनस थ्री पे आया जब हमने के को फाइव रखा तो ये माइनस एलेवन आया तो इस तरीके से जो पोल्स अपनी जगह बदलते हुए नज़र आ रहे हैं के की मुख्त वैल्यूज इसको हम कहते हैं पोल्स चलते हुए जा रहे हैं अच्छा एक चीज़ थोड़ी सी नोट करने वाली है यहाँ पर हम जो है बहुत सारे पोल्स निकाल रहे हैं के की हर वैल्यू पे एक पोल निकल रहा है इस केस में जो है हमारे पास क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन जो है इसका ऑर्डर वन है तो एक ही पोल निकलता है एक वक्त में तो हम इसको इस तरह से इमेजन कर सकते हैं जी ये एक ही पोल था जो के के की वैल्यू चेंज करने पर चलता चलता आगे जा रहा है वैसे तो पोल्स निकल रहे हैं के की हर वैल्यू पर एक अलग वैल्यू निकल रही है पोल की तो हम उसको इस तरह से समझते हैं इस तरह से लेंगे कि ये के ये जो पोल है ये एक ही पोल था बेचारा वो चलता चलता आगे जो है इन्फिनिटी की तरफ जा रहा है जैसे जैसे हम के बढ़ा रहे हैं ठीक है अच्छा अब अगर हमारे पास सेकंड ऑर्डर का जो है सिस्टम होता है इसका जो डिनोमिनेटर पोलिनोमियल है उसमें एस को आ रहा होता तो उसके हर के की वैल्यू पर दो पोल्स निकलते दो अलग अलग पोल्स निकलते जब आप के को चेंज करते तो वो उनके पोल्स की नई वैल्यूज़ आती तो उस चीज़ को हम इस तरह से कहते हैं जी कि हम के की वैल्यूज़ चेंज करते जा रहे हैं तो ये जो दो पोल्स हैं यही चलते हुए हमें नज़र आ रहे हैं एक लाइन की शक्ल में लाइन बनती जा रही है इससे यानी एक के बजाय दो लाइंस बनती हुई आपको नज़र आती इस केस में चूंकि सिस्टम आपका फर्स्ट ऑर्डर का है डिनोमिनेटर पोलिनोमियल जो है उसमें एस की पावर हाइस्ट वन आती है एक ही रूट निकलता है इसका तो ये एक ही पोल समझा जाएगा जी वो अपनी जगह बदल बदल के चलता चलता जा रहा है और वो एक लाइन ट्रेस होती जा रही है सेकेंड डिग्री जो है पॉलिनोमियल जो होता है उसके अंदर दो जब निकल आएंगे उसके रूट्स तो दो लाइनें चलती हुई नज़र आएंगी जब एस की पावर हाईएस्ट थ्री होगी तो उसके इसमें तीन निकलेंगे और तीन पोल्स चलते हुए नज़र आएंगे तो ये इस तरह से जो है ना पोल्स हम तस्वुर ये करते हैं कि ये पोल्स चलते हुए जा रहे हैं जैसे जैसे हम के की वैल्यू को चेंज करते जा रहे हैं फ्राम ज़ीरो टू इन्फिनिटी सो Uh, one method of uh, drawing the root locus is that we take the characteristic equation that is the characteristic polynomial denominator of the closed loop transfer function and we solve it find out the roots for different values of k make a table and try to plot it that is one method and that is very unrealistic method the second practical method is that we use matlab r locus function there is a function r locus and we use it to plot the root locus that is a very you know uh, elegant method practical method but what is actually happening behind is is the same thing that uh, is our method number 1 step number 1 but since computer is a very fast machine so it can solve it and can uh, perform millions and millions of calculations within a second so that is no issue for computer and we can use it 
but what method uh, there is another method that is in practice that is used and that is part of your uh, linear control systems course and that method is very useful because it gives us a very good understanding of the root locus and making quick sketches and it's a very practical and useful method and it also gives us an insight into the root locus method a deeper understanding of this root locus method that is what we will learn in the next few slides it's a shorthand method and it uh, it gives us very accurate uh, results even with uh, using approximations so that is exactly what uh, we are going to see next to main ye cheez dobara se explain aapko kar deta hu ke aap jo hai kya kehte hain roots nikale manually solve karte jaye ke ki different values rakhte jaye और उसका टेबल बना लें और उसका ग्राफ बना लें तो इससे भी आप रूट लोकस बना सकते हैं कोई मसला नहीं लेकिन ये बड़ा अनरियलिस्टिक स्लो मेथड है फास्ट मेथड है जी आप कंप्यूटर के मेटलैब सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर एग्जांपल को यूज़ करें उसके आर लोकस को फंक्शन को यूज़ करें वो सारा काम जो है ना ऑटोमेटिकली कर देगा विद इन सेकेंड्स माइक्रो सेकेंड्स एक बड़ा प्रैक्टिकल मैथड है शॉर्ट हैंड मैथड है जो कि आपको सिखाया जाएगा और इसके पीछे मकसद ये है कि इससे आपको एक डीपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग और लर्निंग मिलेगी रूट लोकस मेथड की बिकॉज इस मेथड को इस्तेमाल किया जाता है कंट्रोलर डिजाइनिंग के लिए भी आगे चल के यूज़ किया जाएगा यू विल बी यूजिंग दिस रूट लोकस मेथड फॉर डिजाइनिंग कंट्रोलर देयर फॉर इन ऑर्डर टू गेट अ डीपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग वी विल ट्राई टू लर्न दिस शॉर्ट हैंड मैथड देर आर सर्टन रूल्स ऑफ द रूट लोकस मैथड वी विल फर्स्ट स्टडी दीज रूल्स वी विल लर्न दीज रूल्स then later on when you will solve numerical problems you will be following these rules these are four or five rules which are very simple and very easy to understand and then we will be following these rules in order when we are constructing the root locus number first point or rule is that root locus is always symmetric about the real axis and this means that whatever you get above the real axis will be the same up below it there will be an image of it below the real axis and that is because the reason mathematical reason behind is that our transfer function coefficients are real numbers the coefficients that come with the variable s are real numbers they are not complex numbers they are real numbers because they come from differential equations which have real numbers as coefficients these real numbers are the values of inductance capacitance mass uh, etc spring uh, constant etc these uh, quantities are real numbers mass is always in some real number and appropriate units kilograms or grams it is never like that 2j kilograms and so on so forth so mass electrical resistance inductance capacitance everything uh, has uh real numbers associated with them they are measured by means of real numbers with appropriate units so when we make differential equations we have real numbers in the coefficients of the derivatives and then when we take the laplace transform of and make the transfer function again the coefficients are real numbers so if that is the situation the roots will always be uh either real numbers or if they are imaginary they will have uh, conjugate with it if it they are complex numbers then they will be uh, there will be conjugate of that number as well if a pole or a zero turns out to be a complex number it will always have its conjugate along with it it will always be in pair if it if it's if it lies on the real axis then it will it can be a single root it can be a single pole or zero but if it is a complex number it has non zero imaginary part it will always come with the uh, conjugate uh, part as well that is some one thing that you should remember keep in your mind because of this reason the root locus always is symmetric about the real axis whatever you have above the real axis its image will be below the real axis mirror image and then uh, the same part uh, for rule number 1 the uh, the second part of the same rule is that root locus originates from the poles of the open loop function and terminate at the zeros of the open loop function including the zeros at infinity first of all open loop function means gh gh is the open loop function and the poles of the open loop function are not the same as the poles of the closed loop transfer function these are two separate things open loop function is gh and closed loop transfer function is g upon 1 plus gh 
it is not like that the poles of the closed loop transfer function and the poles of the open loop function are same no they will be same when you put k is equal to 0 when the parameter is 0 like I've seen and we have seen in the previous examples when k is 0 and that is the only situation when the uh, closed loop transfer function poles coincide with the open loop function GHS poles only uh, under that circumstances so that is the starting point of the root locus when k is equal to 0 therefore it is written over here that the root locus originates from the poles of the open loop function and then they finally move towards the zeros of the open loop function actually what is moving is the uh, actual thing that is moving is the poles of the closed loop transfer function as we vary k from 0 to infinity uh, the poles of the closed loop transfer function um, are moving but the starting point of those poles are the poles of the open loop function and the ending point of uh, those poles are the zeros of the open loop function and this is a property of the root locus so what you should remember in your mind is whenever you draw the root locus the root locus will start from the poles of the open loop function poles of the gh and they will be moving towards the zeros of the open loop function so with the information only uh, available in form of open loop function gh we can uh, get information about the closed loop transfer function only with the information of open loop function we can uh, get the information about the closed loop transfer function and we are concerned about the closed loop transfer function uh, our concern is are the poles of the closed loop transfer function they should be in the stable region now this is what this point says so I will repeat this point that the closed loop transfer function ke poles are the root locus pe apna safar shuru karte hai, open loop function ke pole se aur inke safar ka ikhtitam hota hai open loop function ke zeros pe jahan pe open loop function ke zeros hote hain ye wahan pe jaake end karte hain apne safar ka jab k ko aap infinity kar dein to inka safar ka ikhtitam ho jata hai aur safar ka aagaz kab hota hai jab aap k ko zero rakhte hain safar ka aagaz open loop functions ke pole se hota hai aur open loop function ke zeros pe ikhtitam hota hai aur ye safar kaun kar rahe hote hain closed loop transfer function ke poles जो के निकलते हैं डिनोमिनेटर पॉलीनोमियल से पॉइंट नंबर 2 पॉइंट नंबर 2 इज दैट द रूट लोकस अप्रोचेस अल्फा एसिम्टोट्स नाउ अल्फा इज द नंबर ऑफ पोल्स ऑफ द ओपन लूप फंक्शन माइनस द नंबर ऑफ द जीरोस ऑफ द ओपन लूप फंक्शन the number of poles of the open loop function are n and the zeros of the open loop functions quantity is m n minus m gives us alpha alpha is the number of asymptotes actually the thing happening is that the closed loop transfer function poles move as we change k from 0 to infinity the closed loop transfer function poles move start their journey from the poles of the open loop function and end their journey at the zeros of the open loop function now if there is a situation that we have more poles in the open loop function and lesser number of zeros that is the order of the denominator polynomial is greater than the numerator polynomial which is normally the case for example we have 1 upon s plus 1 then in that case what will happen a logical question is that as I have said you can ask me that sir you have uh, told us that the uh, in root locus the closed loop transfer function poles start their journey from the poles of open loop function and end their journey at the zeros of the open loop function whereas in the transfer function that I have just said has no zero it has one in the numerator and it has s plus one in the denominator it has one pole so what is happening my reply is that when we don't see any zero in the numerator it means that that zero is not visible it's present at infinity uh, this means that if in the denominator we have one pole and in the numerator we can't see any pole uh, sorry zero in the numerator this means that that zero that we cannot see is actually located at infinity therefore we can't see it and I can prove that mathematically because we have suppose the coefficient of 0 with s 0 s plus 1 
if you solve it the answer is infinity zero is at infinity so what i am saying over here is that if we have same number of poles and zeros then the case is very simple uh, poles in, in, uh, root locus start their journey from the poles of the open loop function gh and end their journey at the zeros of the open loop function it's everything is clear but if the number of zeros in the numerator are less than the number of poles in the denominator then what happens then we say that the extra number of uh, zeros in the uh, uh, poles as compared to the zeros for example if we have two poles in the denominator and we have one zero in the numerator then the there is one extra pole that extra pole goes to infinity and we imagine that there is a zero at infinity and we can justify that mathematically uh, just I've, like i've just said zero s plus one etc so what we say is that when we can't see the same number of zeros in numerator we say that the zero is actually at infinity and the pole is approaching that and when that pole approach tries to approach approach that zero at infinity an asymptote is formed so the number of asymptotes alpha is actually the difference between the number of visible poles and visible zeros those poles that we can see and those zeros that we can see their difference is actually the number of uh, asymptotes or the number of zeros located at infinity which the poles will be ultimately approaching therefore alpha it gives us the number of asymptotes to main is cheez ko dobara se aapko dohra deta hu ye samajhne wala nukta hai agar aapka transfer function aisa hai ki uske numerator mein jo polynomial uska order kam hai denominator ke polynomial ka order zyada hai to iska matlab hai ki denominator ke zyada roots honge numerator ke kam roots honge dono roots mein जो है फ़र्क है अब एक बात ये हो गई दूसरी बात मैंने आपको ये कही है कि क्लोज लूप ट्रांसफर फंक्शन के जो पोल्स होते हैं वो ओपन लू फंक्शन से अपना सफ़र शुरू करते हैं और ये चल के जाते हैं ओपन लू फंक्शन के ज़ीरोज़ की तरफ लेकिन अगर ज़ीरोज़ की तादाद कम होगी तो जो एक्स्ट्रा पोल्स है वो कहाँ जाएंगे तो उसका जवाब यह है कि वो भी ज़ीरोज़ की तरफ जाते हैं मगर हम इमेजन करते हैं कि हमारे जो ज़ीरोज़ हैं वो इन्फिनिटी पर पड़े हुए हैं तो ये इन्फिनिटी की तरफ चले जाते हैं जहाँ ये भी ज़ीरो की तरफ रहें मगर उन ज़ीरोज़ की तरफ जो इन्फिनिटी पे पड़े हैं तो हमारे पास दो तरह के जो है ना फाइनाइट पोल्स होते हैं फाइनाइट ज़ीरोज़ होते हैं इनफाइनाइट पोल्स और इनफाइनाइट ज़ीरोज़ होते हैं इनफाइनाइट पोल्स का तो मसला नहीं है इनफाइनाइट ज़ीरोज़ जो है ना वो आपको मिलेंगे जो कि यहाँ पर एसम की शक्ल में नज़र आते हैं जैसे कि अगर आपका जो है डिनोमिनेटर का पॉरिनोमियल डिग्री टू का है न्यूमिनेटर का डिग्री वन का है तो दोनों में फ़र्क आया वन का इसका मतलब है एक ज़ीरो इन्फिनिटी पे पड़ा हुआ है एक फाइनाइट ज़ीरो है दो फाइनाइट पोल्स हैं दो फाइनाइट पोल में से ज़ीरो की तादाद को सब करें तो आपको वन मिलता है यानी एक इन्फिनिटी पे ज़ीरो पड़ा हुआ है तो जितने आपके ज़ीरो इन्फिनिटी पे पड़े होते हैं हम कहते हैं इतने एसम हैं यानी कि पोल जो है वो इन एसम को अप्रोच करेगा ठीक है इनकी तरफ बढ़ने की कोशिश करेगा और इन्फिनिटी पे जाके मिल जाएगा तो इसलिए जो है ना जो तादाद का फ़र्क है ज़ीरोज़ और पोल्स की उतने एसम टोट्स आपके पास होते हैं ये पॉइंट अपने जहन में रखें सो द थर्ड पॉइंट इज़ अबाउट दी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द एसम टोट्स बेसिकली वॉट एसम टोट इज यू कैन इमेजिन इट एज लाइन इट कैन बी वन स्टेट लाइन इट कैन बी टू स्टेट लाइन इट कैन बी थ्री स्टेट लाइन और मोर these are lines that intersect each other together at and uh, they make some angle with each other and with the x axis asymptotes are simply by asymptotes we mean that you have to draw lines if we have a um, value of alpha equal to 1 you have one line to draw which the root locus will approach when you will draw the root locus if we have alpha is equal to 2 you have to draw two lines at certain angle with each other and uh, making and certain angle with the x axis and then the root locus will approach there those lines and so on so forth so asymptotes make certain angle with them asymptotes are for asymptotes you have to draw some lines those lines make some angle with each other and with the x axis and in this rule basically we determine the angle of the asymptote lines and that is obtained by this formula theta is equal to r times plus minus r times 180 upon alpha if suppose alpha turns out to be 3 this means that the open loop function has three more poles 
then these zeros then we have three asymptotes we have three zeros at infinity in that case you have to draw three lines at certain angle with each other and x-axis so by this theta we calculate the angle they make with the x-axis theta gives us the angle with the x-axis if we have three asymptotes and you put it in the formula plus minus r180 upon alpha then we uh, if you divide 180 by 3 that turns out to be 60 r is a num real number and we put positive values uh, numbers in it r one, is equal two, to 1 3, three so on. 5 so odd numbers. Uh, for the first value of theta for the angle of one of the asymptotes first asymptote line we uh, find out angle theta as uh, plus 1 multiplied with 180 upon 3 that turns out to be 60 degrees so one line makes an angle 60 degree with the x-axis then next we put then next we put minus 1 into 180 upon 3 r is 1 first we put positive 1 then we put negative 1 in this sequence we proceed when when we put minus 1 that turns out to be minus 60 so second line makes an angle of minus 60 degrees with the x-axis as you can see over here and then the third one for third r is equal to 3 plus 3 for this so the third line third asymptote line makes an angle of 180 degree with x-axis so in this way we get a shape uh, um, um, that we can we have structure of the asymptote lines that is how they will be oriented when they are drawn on the complex plane we have their structure with us that what angle they will make with the x-axis the second question arises uh, that all these when all these lines intersect the uh, before second question keep one thing in mind that all these asymptote lines they cut each other they will always cut each other they will have intersect each other at say point for example point o so the second question arises where will your this point o be located on the real axis it will always lie on the real axis asymptote will always cut the real axis at a single point all the lines will cut together at the single point on the real axis and that point let us say o its location on the x axis is given by this formula that is uh, sigma a gives us the location of point o and from this formula sum of all the finite poles minus sum of all the finite zeros divided by the number of finite poles minus finite zeros in the denominator we have the difference of sum of poles and sum of zeros uh, uh, numbers quantity in the denominator we have quantity we have the quantity of uh, the poles in the denominator we have quantity of the poles and the quantity of zeros and quantity of zeros are subtracted from the quantity of poles and in the numerator we have the sum of the poles all the poles their values will be added together all the zeros their values will be added together and the value can summed value will be subtracted from the summed value of the poles so by this formula we get the location on the x-axis where it will always be a real number it should always be a real number if there is no mistake you will get the location where the point O of the asymptotes where all the asymptote lines intersect each other that point where that point is located on the real axis that point is obtained by this formula so what we have said over here is that pehli baat ye hai ki asymptotes hain usko aap imagine kare ye ek lines hain theek hai inki tadad aapko pichle point se mil jayegi alpha ki shakal mein ye lines aapas mein hamesha ek dusre ko intersect karengi jahan se originate kar rahi hain start kar rahi hain in जो स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट है वो ऑलवेज इंटरसेक्ट करेगा आपस में ठीक है अब ये इनका स्ट्रक्चर कैसे एक्स एक्सिस के साथ इनका क्या एंगल बनेगा क्या ओरिएंटेशन होगी जाहिर सी बात है अगर एक लाइन है तो किसी भी एंगल पे हो सकती है किस एंगल पे रख रहे हैं इसको ये चीज़ पता होगी चलेगी आपको थीटा में से आर टाइम्स वन एट प्लस माइनस आर टाइम्स वन एटी अपॉन एल्फा से तो यहाँ पर जो है हमने एल्फा को अगर तीन रखें तो आर को हम पहले वन रखेंगे उस पर हमारा एंगल सिक्सटी का निकल आता है एक लाइन 60 का एंगल बनाएगी एक्स एक्सेस के साथ फिर आर को माइनस वन रख के एंगल निकालेंगे माइनस सिक्सटी का एंगल बनेगा फिर हम जो है आर की प्लस थ्री डालेंगे जिस पे एंगल 180 एटी निकल आएगा फिर मज़ीद आर की वैल्यूज नहीं डालेंगे अगर कोई चार चौथा भी होता तो अगली आर की वैल्यू माइनस टू की डलती इसमें
तो इस तरीके से हम इनका आपस का एंगल निकाल के इसका एक स्ट्रक्चर कंस्ट्रक्ट कर लेते हैं कि कैसा शेप होगा एस की लाइन्स का अब दूसरा सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि इसको हम लोकेट कहाँ करेंगे अपने कॉम्प्लेक्स प्लेन पर तो उसका ये मसले का हल है कि जहाँ ये इंटरसेप्ट करती हैं उस पॉइंट का आप नाम दे दें ओ ये ओ पॉइंट हमेशा एक्स एक्सिस पे कहीं ना कहीं लाइक करेगा कहाँ लाइक करेगा वो वैल्यू आपको इस फार्मूले से मिलती है इस फार्मूले से मिलती है वो पॉइंट जहाँ पर जो है इंटरसेक्शन जो एस एम टोट्स की जो लाइन है वो आपने रखनी है तो हम इस लाइन को उठा के उस जगह पर रख देते हैं इस तरह से हमारे एस एम टोट्स बन जाते हैं द पॉइंट दैट वी हैव जस्ट कंसिडर्ड मे नॉट बी क्लियर फुली एट द मोमेंट बट वैन वी विल बी सॉल्विंग द नमेरिकल्स दैन यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैम इन अ बिट मोर डिटेल नो लेट्स कम टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट सेज दैट ऑन द रियल एक्सेस रूट लोकस लाइज ओनली ऑन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड ऑफ ऑड नंबर ऑफ क्रिटिकल फ्रीकुनसीज क्रिटिकल फ्रीकुनसी इंक्लूड्स पोल्स एंड जीरोज बोथ इट्स अ कॉमन टर्म फॉर बोथ पोल्स एंड जीरोज जीरो एज वेल एज पोल बोथ आर कॉल्ड क्रिटिकल फ्रीकुनसी the side that is the left hand side on the real axis of odd number of critical frequencies is where the root locus can exist root locus can exist above and below the real axis everywhere but on the real axis it can only exist at sides which are on the left hand side of odd number of critical frequencies if you start from plus infinity along the x axis and start moving towards zero and you encountered a encounter 1 0 for example during this journey then after that root locus can exist on the x axis then suppose you encounter another zero or pole then you move forward you cannot have a um, root locus on the real axis after these two critical frequencies however after that you encounter another zero for example or a pole then after that you can have re, uh, root locus on the real axis because that would be the left side of odd number of critical frequency in order to check whether the root locus can exist at a particular point on the real axis you have to look on the right hand side and up to the infinity and count the number of poles and zeros including the poles and zeros that are complex above and below the real axis real axis you including those poles you have to count them all together and see that if that number is odd or even if it is uh, odd number then we can have root locus over there but if it is an even number we cannot have root locus at that point so this point says that root locus lies on the real axis on the left hand side of odd number of critical frequencies when we will be solving numerical problems this point will become more clear The next point is about the breakaway points. Breakaway points are obtained from this equation. N d dash minus d n dash equals to zero, where n is the numerator of the open loop function that is g h, and d is the denominator of the open loop function g h. G h numerator is n, and denominator is d. So d dash means that we have differentiated it once with respect to s. N dash means we have differentiated n with respect to s. So when we put uh, the after differentiation in uh, these polynomials in this equation and solve it and try to find out the roots, those roots gives us the breakaway points. What are breakaway points? Breakaway points are those points on the root locus when two different lines of the root locus come together. Touch each other and then go away. When the uh, that is root locus lines come together and at one point that is breakaway point, they touch each other and then go away. That is called the breakaway point. We can have many breakaway points in the root locus because we can have many poles moving here and there and they come together, touch each other and then move away. Uh, we can have that kind of situation. so uh, poles come close to each other then move away that point is called breakaway point sometimes the breakaway points don't lie on the root locus they are don't fall in the range specified by the previous point that is point number 4 rule number 4 sometimes that happens in that case you have to discard those points the roots obtained from this equation not all of them will be applicable Uh, uh, for uh, because 
those points uh, there are those roots are the breakaway points of the complementary root locus since we are making half of the root locus we are not considering the uh, complementary root locus that is where the k is varied from minus infinity to zero the, we can have breakaway points there as well so those breakaway points that don't fall within the range of uh, point number four are discarded and only those points which fall within the range of the point number four are considered as the valid breakaway points breakaway points are those where the uh, root locus come together touch each other and then move away now we will consider a numerical example we have this uh, system we want to make its root locus the open loop function which is also called the loop gain gh is equal to 1 upon s plus 1 s plus 2 and uh, we have a closed loop system its closed loop transfer function is not given over here and we will not find be finding the closed loop transfer function because uh, we can check the uh, closed loop poles behavior with respect to this uh, parameter k without having actually the closed loop transfer function only using the open loop function gh we can find out the location on behavior of the closed loop transfer function poles so if you look over here we have numerator equals equal to 1 and the denominator we have s plus 1 s plus 2 if we open the brackets that becomes s square plus 3s plus 2 so this is our open loop function with the help of this open loop function we will be predicting the behavior of poles of the closed loop transfer function and imagine that there is a k that is in the numerator as before this uh, block g and we will be varying this k from 0 to infinity now the first step uh, locate the open loop function poles that are minus 1 and minus 2 on the complex plane as shown over here there are no finite zeros apparently there are no zeros but I will say that there are no finite zeros because there are two invisible or in zeros at infinity we don't use the word in, invisible we say infinite zeros there are two infinite zeros two zeros at infinity there are no two there are two finite poles so draw those poles on the complex plane and write for your memory symmetry the pole, the root so that you remember that when you draw the root locus root locus is symmetric about the real axis so first of all, you can draw the complex plane with a beautiful way to draw the line and put the marking on the marking on the x-axis on minus 1 and minus 2 on two poles and these are open loop function poles and there are two finite poles and there are no zeros in it there are no finite zeros in it there are zeros in infinity now let's go to point number 2 asymptotes of the data so alpha is the asymptotes of the data and it is equal to n minus m k n is the finite poles of the data which is 2 and m is the finite zeros of the data which is 0 so alpha will come to 2 minus 0 2 so alpha is the number of asymptotes alpha is the number of asymptotes and which is equal to the number of zeros at infinity we have two finite poles we have no finite zero so we calculate alpha as n minus m 2 minus 0 that is alpha is equal to 2 we have two zeros at infinity we have two zeros at infinity this means that there are two asymptotes next thing about the structure of the asymptotes how we have to draw the lines for the asymptotes so the angle is obtained by this formula first we put r is equal to 1 then we put uh, 1 with minus sign and the alpha is 2 so 180 divided by 2 is 90 so when we put 1 plus 1 uh, plus r plus 1 we get plus 90 when we put minus r minus 1 in uh, 
and then 90 we, we get minus 90 so one asymptote line makes an angle of plus 90 with the x-axis the other makes minus 90 one line goes vertically upward the other line goes vertically downwards both lines cut each other or start from a single point let us say that point is O and uh, this O is located on the real axis at sigma A sigma is the point on real axis where you will locate the uh, point O on the real axis so in the next slide when you will see the asymptote lines you will be able to you should be able to understand that how we have located these asymptote lines at certain point that point is sigma A that sigma A point is obtained by adding all the poles that is minus 2 and minus 1 and subtract from that sum of all the zeros we have no zeros no finite zeros therefore we have written 0 over here in the numerator in the denominator we have 2 minus 0 because we have two poles in the open loop function and no finite 0 in the open loop function therefore when we solve it we have minus 1.5 so our asymptote a line that is going vertically upward and the second line going vertically downward it will be located or cutting the real axis at minus 1.5 we will draw this by means of dashed line two lines one vertically upward and other vertically downward at minus 1.5 this thing is shown over here in this slide we have drawn the dashed lines one vertically up going upward and the other vertically going downward and both of them are passing through minus 1.5 now comes point number four point number four is about the says that uh, on the real axis root locus lies on the left hand side of odd number of critical frequencies critical frequencies include poles and zeros both if you look at the graph you can see that the range minus 2 is less than s is less than minus 1 that is actually the left hand side of odd number of critical frequencies because when you go on the right hand side of this pole minus 1 that we don't have any pole on the right side of this region up to infinity starting from let's start from infinity positive infinity we keep on moving towards zero we don't encounter any critical frequency any pole or zero so we can't have anything over here then finally we reach minus one then minor when minus one is reached and we move forward that becomes the left hand side of one pole that becomes the left hand side of one that is an odd number of critical frequency therefore we can have root locus on the real axis over here that is the left hand side of minus one pole minus one look at the look the pole look at location minus one its left hand side has can have root locus as shown by the dark line over here and pointed out by the arrow then we move keep on moving moving towards minus two the pole located as at minus two and then we cross it that becomes the left hand side of two poles that becomes the left hand side of two critical frequencies that becomes the left hand side of even number of critical frequencies. so we can't have a root locus on the real axis on the left hand side of minus two pole the pole located at, at minus two it's on left hand side we can't have any root locus on the real axis this is this rule is applicable for the root locus on lying on the real axis not above and below it or the that kind of situation so this what we have to do is we have to find out a range like we have done over here a range from minus 2 up to minus 1 minus 2 is less than s is less than minus 1 so we say that on real axis root locus lies in this range because that is the left hand side of odd number of critical frequencies this is what we see in this point if you have any kind of confusion you can ask me now we talk about the breakaway points in the breakaway points first of all in the numerator n is equal to 1 and its derivative is 0 if you differentiate it with respect to s that is 0 in the denominator we have s square plus 3s plus 2 we, when we differentiate it that becomes 2s plus 3 when we put it in this equation and we solve it this turns out to be s is equal to minus 1.5 so we have a breakaway point at minus 
and by coincidence it is the same point where the asymptote lines are passing so when the root locus turns or breaks away it lies on the asymptote normally this does not happen it approaches the asymptote line and meet, meets it at infinity but in this case and in some root locus cases uh, these root locus right from the beginning lies on the asymptote line which is in happening in this case so what happens is that the poles at minus 2 and minus 1 they move together to, towards the breakaway point uh, poles always move towards the breakaway point and then they depart and move away so poles start moving towards the uh, breakaway point starting from the from minus 2 and the other minus 1 the pole at minus 2 starts moving towards right hand side and the other one located at minus 1 starts moving towards left hand side and they both touch each other at minus 1.5 one of the poles st moves starts moving upward and the other one starts moving downward and in this way uh, the shape of the root locus that comes in front of us in our minds and then later on paper is that we draw lines uh, the pole um, at minus 2 starts moving towards right hand side and the other one towards left hand side we draw lines they meet together at minus 1.5 one of the line moves straight upward vertically and the other line moves straight vertically downward now one shortcoming of this root locus method is that by this method we are not clear and sure which one goes up and which one goes down for that uh, you um, this is one of the limitations of this method but that is not a big uh, limitation but that limitation is no no longer there when you solve this on the matlab using r, la r locus function because then they show the root locus they show the different poles with a different color so in the next slide you can see the complete root locus that will result after all this working now i will expect from you that you should draw these axes and lines neatly with the help of scale and they should be kept straight and everything should be drawn neatly and clearly now here we have another example and in this example we have s plus 1 in the numerator of uh, the plant and s plus 2 and s plus 3 in the denominator and in the feedback path we have 1 and the uh, case of course connected before this uh, plant and it will be varied as the root locus is drawn now here in this slide uh, first of all identify the poles and zeros as you can see over here the zero is minus one poles are minus two minus three we have two finite poles and one finite zero in drawing the root locus first of all draw the complex plane and locate the poles and zeros of open loop function as you can see a zero at minus one a pole as at minus two and minus three as you can see over here then we have the uh, asymptotes the number of asymptotes since uh, we have uh, two finite poles and one finite zero therefore the number of asymptotes is uh, n minus m is equal to one so when we we have alpha is equal to one then we find out the angle the angle turns out to be 180 degrees we put plus r plus 1 into 180 that is 180 degrees and then we find out the location of this uh, asymptote there is no point in finding the location because we have only one and it will lie on the x-axis so there is no point as such uh, but we will find it anyways uh, by using the same formula sigma is equal to sum of all the finite poles minus sum of all the finite zeros divided by the number of finite poles minus finite zeros so add them together and find out the point where this asymptote uh, in, um, will originate or uh, its lines will start on the x-axis and then that point turns out to be minus 2 as you can see in this slide
Next, find, we find the range of S on the real axis where root locus can lie. And we see that uh, minus 2 is less than S is less than minus 1 between minus 2 and minus 1. That is between R0 located at minus 1 and the pole located at minus 2 between that root locus can exist on real axis as shown by the line over here and then root locus can exist after uh, the pole located at minus 3 on the left hand side of the pole at minus 3 up to minus infinity so we write s is less than minus 3 so root locus can exist on real axis for uh, the values less than minus 3 that is the left hand side of the pole at minus 3 and root locus can exist between 0 and minus 2 the root locus can exist at um, um, between the 0 at minus 1 and the pole at minus 2 in between these two points root, uh, root locus can exist on real axis so this is exactly what we have drawn over here in this slide now move to the next slide breakaway points in breakaway points in the numerator we have s plus 1 its derivative is 1 in the denominator we have s square plus 5s plus 6 its derivative is 2s plus 5 we solve this in, after putting it in the equation and we get two roots both of them don't lie within the range that was obtained in point number 4 so we will discard both of the points in this case both of the breakaway points are not applicable because they don't lie in the range obtained in the point number 4 so the range that you get in point number 4 is very important if it is incorrect then your breakaway points step will also get incorrect so finally we complete the root locus it is as shown over here in this slide the pole at minus 2 starts moving towards the 0 at minus 1 because it has no other place to go uh, root locus exists between 0 and pole therefore poles always move towards the zeros Def the logical understanding is that this pole at minus 2 will move towards the 0 at minus 1 so we draw an arrow like that now the other pole will move towards another 0 that but that 0 is at infinity root locus on the real axis exists on the points that are left side of minus 3 as we have found the range in point number 4 so logically uh, root locus we should we draw the root locus uh, like that that it is drawn on the left side of minus 3 moving towards infinity moving towards a 0 that is invisible that is located at infinity so th uh, from the previous uh, steps and some common sense that pole moves towards the zero pole is uh, root locus exists here and root locus, locus does not exist here we conclude that pole uh, which was look at the location minus two will move towards the zero which is located at minus one and we draw the arrow in this way towards right hand side then we focus on the pole that is at minus three it will move towards the zero and that zero as a at infinity our sm towards angle is 180 degree this means that the zero at infinity is located at uh, minus infinity because sm toward angle is 180 degrees so root locus will try to go towards that zero and uh, this root locus will uh, be moving towards minus infinity like that so this gives completes our root locus for this example now here is an here is an exercise and i have drawn the uh, expected root locus of this open loop function you have to solve it following all the steps and try to get this type of root locus the open loop function has a 0 s plus 2 uh, in the numerator we have 0 at minus 2 and in the denominator we have s plus 1 square so there are two poles which are located at minus 1 and there is one 0 that is located at minus 2 
and in this kind of situation we draw a circle like that with practice you will learn this thing here we have exercise number two in this exercise the open loop function gh has no finite zero however it has three finite poles two poles are located at minus two and one pole is located at minus four so in the denominator we have s plus two whole square s plus four when you will draw the root locus of this type of uh, open loop function you should get this type of shape as shown over here and a few things that you must remember is that you need a lot of practice you should uh, solve the root locus of different from examples in the textbook especially from Philip's John Parr book and then you can check your result using MATLAB using our, our locus function now here I end my lecture and solve these examples and you can ask questions from me during the uh, class timings as per the timetable I'll be available online I am rather available online and if you have any kind of queries do not hesitate to ask me thank you